Hi, welcome to you all. Today, with this video, we're going to discuss about uh, Diopoli model, that is Cornot Diopoli model. This is very important and it's very easy to understand. Now, we'll discuss in detail Cornot Diopoli model in detail. Now, Diopoli model is a special type of the oligopoly. Oligopoly means few sellers, market and many buyers. So here, duopoly is a special type of the oligopoly market where we can see only two producers or we can say sellers that are existed in the market. So here it is existed both non-collusive oligopoly means sellers are completely independent in the decision making. Now, what about the price, price and output of one firm? It does not affect the other to set a certain reactions. So they are independent to each other. Cornot and Edgeworth ignore the mutual independence. So these two people are, uh, they are, uh, they say that one, they are independent in making a decision, but uh, Chamberlain, he recognized the mutual independence. So, Cornot and Edgeworth, they are, uh, they are ignore the dependence, but the Chamberlain, very special, he tried to explain that they are mutually dependent. Now, we'll understand in clear of this theory. This is the earliest duopoly model, which is developed by a French economist that is Augustin Cournot in 1838. So it's a French economist. So he considers two forms, they are owing a mineral well. So he given by explaining with the owing the mineral well, each form acts on the assumption that its competition will not change its output. And decides his own output so has to maximize his profit. The major assumptions of this theory is that they are two independent sellers. They are not the dependent one. They are the independent sellers. They produce and sell homogeneous products. The number of buyers are very large. Only two sellers are there. Each producers know the market demand for the product which is available in the market and what about the cost of production the cost of production is zero both the firms have identical cost even identical demand curve each firm decide their own quantity of output and ignores the real role of the rival so this is very important they decide their own quantity of output and they are not okay they ignore the role of the rival so the supply curve of the rival is constant remains stable each entry of the firm new firm is blocked only two firms are existed so they aiming at maximization of the profit now another important is that Neither of them fixes the price for its product, but each accept the market demand price. So this is very important. Each firm okay, fixes the, each of them fix the price of its product. Okay, but each accept, okay, they, sorry, each will not, will fix the price of its product. Neither of them fix the price of the product but each of them accept the market demand at which products can be sold. So no one is fixes the price of the product. So this is an important assumption. Let us understand in detail of this theory with the help of this graph. Initially, a firm is only the seller in the mineral, that is uh, mineral water in the market that is the assuming the cost of production is 
zero. The charging the price is OP of the price and the supply is OQ of the quantity in the market. So, and again, we know that when uh, MC equals uh, MR1, which is again equals to the zero, a marginal cost equals to the marginal, and again, this is the way uh, it is a zero. Here, charges monopoly price, that is the total revenue equals O, P2, P2. This is a monopoly charge price they're charging since there's only one producer, one seller in the market. Now, when the firm B enters in the market, he got half of the market share, his product. Now, when B enters, okay, early, earlier only one seller in the market, they are charging the monopoly price, that is a O, P2, P, Q. Now, B enters the market and use and he again assuming that A will not change is the price and output. Since they're thinking that they will not change the price of OP2 and they will not change of OQ of quantity. So, the market available for B is that P and N. This is the market available for the market. So, here firm supplies the half of the uh, half of the market and that is MR2 once again uh, half of the market and this market demand air revenue and MR curve is that MR2 and of course the firm uh, cost of production also zero so firm the price is OP1 is the price and output is that is QN other half of the product will produce this so q1 amount of uh, output and the total revenue which earned by the uh, uh, form b is that q is a q or p1n so this much of total revenue that is a firm uh, b earns when she enters so here the both both the firms a r B are supplying the half of the market share which they have. So both the people are supplying half of. So now firm supplies only one fourth of the total market demand. So now we, we can say that one. So only one fourth remaining. So other that is uh, uh, half of half is left to the uh, that is the firm A. So this this half is left to the firm A. So one fourth of the supply is supplied by the uh, that is the B, and remaining one fourth is remain unsupplied in the market. So the firm supplies only half of the total market, which is half into half equals one fourth. So this much. Now the low price of firm that is uh, OP1, which compel the A to reduce the price. Earlier price is A is OP2. Now, form B enters and charges the price OP1. So, this OP1 prices compel the uh, price of the uh, form A reduces. So, when firm assumes that the firm will not continue to produce, uh, will continue to produce of the one-fourth of the market, so the total market which is available for the B is at three fourth. So that is this is a half and remaining this one fourth. So that is a three fourth. So this half of the market and this one fourth. So this much one fourth and this much of one two is available the market. So that is one minus one fourth equals three by fourth. So, this much is available to the market B. So, now again, they assume that. So, to maximize this profit from here, he will supply half the market share available for him. Now, in this 1, 2 and 1, 4, in this again, she going to produce half. That is half into 3, 4, that is a 3, 3, 8 market supply will going to uh, produce the firm 
uh, A. So now here form here uh, share will fall half to 3 8 because as a B enters. Then form B also assume that form will not form A will not change will not con will continue to supply 3 8 of the market demand. So the market demand uh, available for the B equals 1 minus 3 8, 3 8 equals 5 8 is available to the market B. So now to maximize this profit form B under new market condition the supply half of its market demand that is half into 5 8. So 5 8 of the market is available in that half will go into produce to get the maximization profit of the form B. So the form will uh, also change its price and output accordingly. So since uh, available market again shared by the form B. Now the process of action and reaction will continue in the uh, continuous every period. So the market share, the determination of the market share, here you can see with the help of this chart. The first first period, so no market is, so uh, no rivals available, so half is available. As a B enters, in the half, uh, they're going to produce a half that is a one four. So then again, the next period, remaining half, once again, so forms B, they thought of, they'll continue to produce the same one four. So remaining uh, that uh, what is available market share will going to produce half of that market share. So this continuous process, half, that is one minus five, that is the remaining market share in that again. So out of the market share uh, uh, form A will produce half. Then remaining out of market share, form B will produce half. And remaining market share again, form will going to produce half. This process of action and reaction, action and reaction will continue in the successive period up to the point of N. Okay. A form will lose his market share since B will gain till both form equal to the market share. So as a market share divided, so B was gaining, A is losing market share. At the end of this process, both the firms will have one third of the market demand. So the final price will greater than the competitive price that less than the monopoly price. So in case of industry or market, one third portion will be unsupplied in the market because the available market share both will uh, to maximize profit only half of that market they are producing. So in general if there are n firms in the market industry that is n in the industry each will produce 1 n plus 1 1 n plus 1 of the market and the industry output will be n by n uh, plus 1 that is each market share for form A will available one third, form B one third is available, a remaining one third that is one third market is unsupplied in the market. So this is what they uh, according to uh, Cournot model of duopoly. Now we'll see the criticism part. So the model does not say how long the adjustment period will be. So it is a one year, six month or so years, they're not given any period. The costless production, since we say that one MC is a zero, so it is of unrealistic marginal cost. The cost of production of the uh, is, uh, it is unrealistic one. So this, this is a closed model because it does not allow entry of the firms. So only two firms in the market and it is a closed and is not allowing to entry of the firm. That is one drawback. So 
this is no learning by uh, doing model and the supply of rival is fixed but here supply is repeatedly changing so that is one of the important criticism now what happened here the supply who is the rivals b is a remain fixed but since b enters so they again supply is keep on changing for a and the subsequently continue uh, adjustment b also changing but uh, this is uh, yeah, what assuming the remain fixed is of wrong perception that's all about could not uh, model thank you thank you for watching